You know, I think Uncle Charlie did a pretty good job with this room. Well, it's okay. Well, I'm sure glad I talked Uncle Charlie out of sticking that old dresser of Dad's in here, though. You don't sound too enthused. What's wrong with the way he fixed this room? Well, if I were doing it, I'd put the bed over there, and that chest over there, and that chest under that picture, and... What difference does it make? As long as they're as happy as we were in this room, that's all that matters. I'll buy that. Oh, sorry, but Uncle Charlie said dinner's ready. And if everybody doesn't come right now, he's gonna throw it all on the floor. <laughs> okay, we'll be right there. Okay. Honey, why don't we... Hey, you want to eat dinner off the floor? Come on. <laughs> oh, another thing. Don't forget that little talk you're going to have with Uncle Charlie. I won't. Okay. Hey, Katie, aren't you going to eat the rest of your dessert? No, I can't eat another bite. That was a good dinner, Uncle Charlie. Sure was. Just a little something I picked up from a peg leg sea cook from Sumatra. <laughs> Chip, uh, don't you and Ernie have some last-minute homework? Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll call home and check about the babies. Oh, boy. Talk about rats deserting a sinking ship. Whoa. Oh, no, Charlie. Rob will help with the dishes. Oh. Okay. What's the deal? Um... Uh, well, what do you? Now, look, I've been around long enough to know a setup when I see one. Now, what does Katie want you to tell me now that we just happen to be alone? <laughs> well, uh, Dad and Barbara are coming home tomorrow. I know that. Well, uh, Katie wants you to sort of, uh, take it easy with Barbara. Take it easy? Well, you, you do come on a little strong sometimes, Uncle Charlie, and uh, now Barbara's going to be a part of the family. Me? I come on strong? Well, we know you don't mean anything by it, but, uh... Well, Katie just wants you to sort of tone it down a little bit. Till Barbara can get used to all of us. Look, you can tell Katie she's got nothing to worry about. I'm gonna be so refined that Barbara will think she moved in with Mr. Emily Post. <laughs> my shirt. We look all right now? Well, you'll do. But you guys just remember what I told you. No horsing around. We don't want Barbara to think that she married into a family of hooligans. Hey, they're here now. Come on. <laughs> Welcome home, you guys. Oh, hi. Hi, 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 hi. Hey, you want us to help you get the luggage out? Well, yeah, yeah, there's uh, plenty to go around. We got all of Jody's things when we picked her up at her grandmother's. Good deal. Welcome aboard, Barbara. Well, thank you, Charlie. How was the trip? I mean, is Mexico still there? Oh, it was perfect, Charlie. Couldn't have been better. How does your doll feel about living here with us, Jody? She's not a doll. She's a puppet. Well, can she talk? Sure, but I'm the only one that can hear her. <laughs> How was the weather? Oh, it was beautiful the whole time. That's nice. That's real nice, Barbara. <laughs> well, I hope you like the room. Oh, it's, it's lovely, Charlie. I can see you've gone to a lot of trouble. Oh, but well, you're the one that picked out the furniture. All I did was stash the stuff in here. But it's, it's lovely, don't you think, Steve? That's no, very nice, Charlie. Very nice. Swell. Of course, you can rearrange it if you want to. Oh, no, no. I I like it just the way it is. It's uh, very nice, Charlie. Okay. But if you want to change it, you won't be hurting my feelings a bit. Now, if you will excuse me. <laughs> oh. What's in here, Rock? 
collection? <laughs> no, it's kind of heavy, huh? Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Uh, these three go into my room. You ready, Aaron? No, but let's go. Yeah. Isn't this a nice room, Dodie? Yeah, Mama. I like it. What set of the bed is yours, Mama? Steve, does it make any difference? Not to me, no. Oh, that one over there, I guess. Then this side is mine. Well, uh, Dodie, you see, um, Steve is going to stay here, too. Okay, well, will you sleep, Mr. Douglas? Well, Dodie... You don't understand, Dodie. You see, Steve and I are going to share this room, and you're going to have your own room right across the hall. How come? Well, Mr. Douglas... It... <laughs> well, Steve and I are... are married now. Dodie, uh, your mother and I will be right in here if you need us for anything. You're going to have a room all to yourself. Won't that be fun? I don't think so. Well, um, why don't we unpack and get settled? It's an awful pretty room. Hey, you see, honey? This is your very own room. And your own little bed. And is that my dark closet? Well, that's not so dark. We'll hang your clothes in there later. And is that my window looking out where it's so dark and spooky? <laughs> Dodie, there's nothing to be scared about. Then how come Myrtle's shaking? Because Myrtle's very little, and she doesn't understand that Mommy and Daddy are right in the next room. With the door closed and the big hall in between, if Myrtle yelled, nobody would hear her. I'll hear. And I'll have you in my arms before you can say, Jack. Robinson. Chuck Robinson. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Honey, I've uh, taken over a couple of drawers in this chest. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Fine. Dodie, all right? Well, that was touch and go for a while, but Myrtle seems to like the room, so Dodie went along with it. Good. Yeah. You're uh, not going to worry about it, are you? No, she'll be all right. Well, this is a big adjustment for her. Now, if you think she should be with you for a couple of days, mm -hmm. well, I knew you'd say that. That's one of the reasons I love you. Sure. One of these days we'll have to go down the list. Do you think Charlie meant that? Uh, meant what? About uh, changing the room around. For well, sure he meant it. Oh, good. Well, now, I think that the bed should go there. And uh, that chest over there. And then uh, mm, that chest should go underneath the picture. <laughs> That was delicious tea, Charlie. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Barbara. I went ahead and bought the stuff for dinner. Mm, good. Now, if you don't like it, why, just merely say so. Oh, I'm sure I like it, no matter what it is. It's chicken. Fine. Mm. Uh... Would you rather fix it yourself? Well, I do have a lot of things to put away. If you don't mind doing it tonight. Oh, I don't mind a bit. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Barbara. I, uh, I guess I'll finish my unpacking. Good idea, Barbara. <laughs> hey, what kind of talk was that? Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> That's just plain, ordinary, everyday politeness. Weird. <laughs> ah, come on, hold it, Alice. You've had your quota. What happened to plain, ordinary, everyday politeness? I'm not wasting it on a cookie addict. <laughs> Mr. Douglas. Oh, hi, Dodie. Uh, come on in. Mama? Uh, Mama's asleep, Dodie. 
What seems to be the problem? Myrtle can't sleep, Mr. Douglas. Oh? I can't either. Uh, you know, I'm kind of wide awake myself. Would you like to go down to the kitchen and get some hot milk? No, thank you. Would you like me to tell you a story? No, thank you. Uh, what do you think might help? I want to talk to some mommy. But she was kind of tired, don't you? Do you think uh, you ought to wake her up? No, that's okay. Do you want to tell me about it? I guess so. Well, I'm listening. What do me don't like to sleep alone? Oh, I uh, kind of thought that might be it. Uh, are you afraid? Not you, of course. I mean, Myrtle. I guess a little bit. Do you think uh, Myrtle could sleep if uh, you climbed up here in bed with us? Okay, come on, climb up here. That a girl. Now let's get the slippers off. And get your feet under the covers, huh? Yeah. You know, Dodie, uh, this has been quite a change for Myrtle. And uh, changes aren't always easy. But uh, she shouldn't be worried because your mommy and daddy are always right here to see that you're safe and happy and have everything you need. Myrtle and me don't have a daddy. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Chip and Ernie will probably call your mother mom, so uh, why don't you let me be your daddy? Why don't you check it out with Myrtle? Is that okay, Myrtle? Uh, what'd she say? Myrtle says okay. Okay. Yeah, here, let me see. Slide down, man. Atta girl. Daddy. Meet you after school and walk home with you, and after that you'll know the way by yourself, okay? Well, I'd be glad to pick her up after school, Barbara, but she gets out before I do. Oh, yeah, I understand. It's all right, Chip. Thanks, anyway. Come on, Ernie. We're going to be late for school. I can't find my algebra book. It's holding up the window in our room. <laughs> Chip called Mama Barbara. He did, huh? Well, I guess that's because he's as big as she is. Come on, Ernie. Come on, come on. You fellas go ahead. I'll take Dodie to school. Okay. See, See you later. Yeah. Well, I uh, guess I've got everything. Come on, Dodie. Bye. Oh, Steve. What did I forget? You forgot to kiss me goodbye. Oh. Well, that hasn't been part of my routine. <laughs> I must say it's a much better way to start the day. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, we could use a couple of cans of tomatoes and some more rice. Hey, tomatoes and rice. Anything else? Mm, that's about it. Well, that's that does it for the staples. Now, what about dinner? We get anything you desire. Well, I haven't any idea what everybody likes. Oh, you take it for me that this crew, uh, I mean, this family will eat anything. <laughs> well, I could use some suggestions. Just get anything that you require, Barbara. Do you enjoy doing the shopping? Well, I ain't hung up on it. Oh, but I have nothing against that either. Well, I just thought maybe, uh, maybe you'd like to get out of the house. Oh, very well, Barbara. Very well what? Very well. I will get out of the house for a while, if that will please you. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> I 
understand it, Katie. I thought that Charlie liked me. Well, he does. What's he done? Well, he hasn't done anything, actually, but his whole attitude seems to have changed. You don't think that he resents Steve marrying? Oh, no. Uncle Charlie's just a little hard to get used to, that's all. I suppose that's it. Well, of course it is. <laughs> Katie, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Uh, I'm sorry to call you like this when you're working, but... Are the boys all right? Oh, they're fine. Uh, Rob, you, you promised me you'd speak with Uncle Charlie about Barbara. I did. You must not have been specific enough. Barbara's upset. You just have to speak to him again. Me? Are you out of your skull? All I know is what Katie told me. Robbie, have you ever known me to make waves? Uh, yes. <laughs> Look, Uncle Charlie, all I'm asking is that you try a little harder. Beginning right now, I'll give it a whole work. I'm going to make Sir Walter Raleigh look like a truck driver. <laughs> oh, here. Uh, let me take that. It's not heavy. I'm not so weak I can't carry in a bag of groceries, Charlie. Oh, oh, not around here you don't. What do you expect me to do? Anything you want to. Like sit on a silk pillow and sew a fine seam? Sure. If that's your hang-up. <laughs> Here, take a load off your feet. No, thank you, Charlie. You're welcome, Barbara. Oh, oh, here, let me do that. Oh, why shouldn't I do it? Because I know where everything goes. Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome, Barbara. <laughs> well, I, I guess there are a few letters I could write. Oh, good idea. Oh. Charlie. You're welcome, Barbara. <laughs> you don't mean Charlie. Honey, <laughs> you've got to be imagining things. No, no, I'm not. Well, what has he said? Well, he, he hasn't said anything. Well, then what has he done? Well, he, he hasn't done anything either. What if he hasn't done anything or said anything? But it, it, it isn't anything you can put your finger on. It, it, it's, just, it's just there somehow. Well, just what has he done to make you think he doesn't like you? Well, he, he's so polite. Charlie? <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that complaint about him. <laughs> That's just it. It isn't a complaint. It's just that he, well, he is so formal that he, he makes me feel stiff and formal, too. Barb, do you want to know what I think about this? I want to know what you think about everything. Well, maybe it isn't Charlie. Maybe it's you. Me? Do you remember how it feels the first few days when you're the new kid at school? And you think everybody's looking at you and judging you and... You... You're the new kid here. I think you're right. I know I'm right. So you just be yourself, and Uncle Charlie will come around. Get a little air. It's uh, budding in time again, right? Well, somebody has to go over and straighten them out. Barbara's all upset. Uncle Charlie told me today he's about to blow a fuse. He says he's allergic to courtesy. And Dad can't handle it. Well, I guess he can. <gasps> Without you? Don't be so smart, Rob Douglas. Katie, you know what you're going to do, don't you? Yeah. Say it. Tell me in so many words. I'm going to stay here. With you. And, uh, 
We'll let them work it out for themselves. Thank you. That's a good girl. <laughs> well, that's the end. Come on, it's bedtime. Give Daddy a kiss. Okay. Oh, time for bed, huh? And now stay tuned to this station for the welterweight champion. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, Daddy. Uh, Barbara, hmm? why don't you let me put her to bed, huh? It's about time for your favorite show, isn't it? Boy, this ought to be a slugfest. <clears throat> Where's this sports page? Brought to you live and in color by satellite from Chamley Stable. My favorite program. <clears throat> don't you just love it? Yeah, I'm crazy about it. <laughs> Why can't Merle and me sleep in your bed again tonight? Well, you can, Dodie, but uh, I don't think you want to. I don't? No. Oh. Now that you uh, know you're really part of our family and how much we all love you, there's no reason for you not to sleep in your own bed. Huh? And you know how much we do love you. Do you love Merle, too? Oh, sure. I think I can truthfully say I've never loved a puppet more. I, I guess we could save it here. Okay. Lie down. I'll tuck you in. Good night, sweetheart. Night, Daddy. Myrtle says good night, too. Oh. Good night, Myrtle. What happened to the fight? What fight? On TV. Uncle Charlie said they were a couple of the top welterweights. Oh, I, I must have shut it off. I wanted to watch the woman's hour. Didn't Uncle Charlie blow his top? No, he never even mentioned it. A man can take just so much. <laughs> it turns off the fight's Practically in front of my nose. I guess I'm just not cut out for that Sir Walter Raleigh jazz. Thank goodness. This one's on me. <laughs> it's plastic. <laughs> Let's go. I don't want you to think that I got out of control completely. I made sure it was a chip plate. <laughs> Well, she's all tucked in. Come on, darling. We're all going to watch the fights. The fights? But I thought you were... <laughs> this ought to be a slugfest. <laughs> Girls. Dodie, it's your turn. Ow! 
I'm sorry. It hurts. Well, let me take a look. It's nothing, Dodie. It's not nothing to me. <laughs> hey, what's going on in here? Something wrong, Dodie? I happened to hit her with the football, Uncle Charlie. Oh, well, now let me see. Well, there's no blood, no broken skin. It's sore than anything. Well, now, don't sweat the little bumps, Dodie, or you won't be able to take it when you really get smacked. <laughs> and look, you guys, be careful with that football. You break a lamp and I'll break some bones. Boy, I hope I never break a lamp. Oh, hi, fellas. Hi, hi Dodie. Daddy! Well, how's my girl? Terrible. What do you mean, terrible? I got my arm mangled by the boys' football. How many times have I told you fellas not to play ball in the house? Oh, sorry, Dad. I guess we got carried away. Well, let's go outside and play, Aaron. That's a good idea. Well, Dodie, come here. Let me see that arm. Which one is it? Now, that's the one, huh? Well, it seems to work all right now. I'll tell you, Dodie, what you do the next time they throw the football at you. Go to a doctor or something? <laughs> no, you throw the football right back at them. But uh, do it outside, okay? Okay. Okay. Well. Oh, hi. You beat me home again. <laughs> hi, sweetheart. Hi, love me. Well, how was your day? Oh, it was fine. Except I lost that list of things I wanted to get for Phoenix. I found that list on the nightstand. Uh, oh, that's right where I put it, so I wouldn't forget where I put it. <laughs> <clears throat> I did everything on my lunch hour. Yeah. Did you get the handle of the suitcase fixed? Mm -hmm. And I threw out your faded swimming trunks, bought your new pair, and I uh, had the grip on your putter change the way you wanted it, and confirmed our flight for Saturday noon. Did you ever get a chance to eat? No, but I have been bulging in a few of the wrong places lately, <laughs> so... <clears throat> Dodie, do you want something? Yeah, that's why I've been clearing my throat. <laughs> Excuse me, can we discuss a couple of things? Yeah, sure, go ahead. In front of him. Oh. Well, uh, I'll tell you, why don't you two girls go upstairs? I have a few things I could be doing down here. Come on, sweetheart. You really shouldn't keep things from Daddy and the boys, you know, honey. Yeah, but it's about them. Oh, well, what is it? Don't get nervous or anything. But I got smashed on the arm by the football the boys threw. Oh, honey. Well, let me see. I think it'll still bend. <sighs> Look at the redness. Pretty rough down there in the living room, you know. It is? Yeah. It's barking and football and Uncle Charlie yelling scary things. Well... Sweetheart, that's how men are. I'm sorry if it bothers you. Oh, it does bother me. It doesn't? No. But it sure does bother Myrtle. Oh, I see. Well, you know what puppets are. They just sort of lie around and don't do a lot of junk. That's right. So I guess Myrtle's scared. Because she's not used to all the roughness. Well, maybe Myrtle ought to know that Mother Nature planned for boys to be rougher because they have the hardest work to do. They do? Well, sure. So if they're noisy and play hard, it's just because that's the way they're made. I don't think Myrtle knew that. Well, we're very lucky that we live in a family of men to help us and protect us. Even if they're rough, right? Right. Dinner time. Uncle Charlie said anybody who's late is going to get clobbered. See what I mean? That's just his way of saying that Uncle Charlie's anxious to see us. Come on. And she's still a little afraid of the male world, Steve. Well, I'll admit it does get a little hectic around here at times. Well, I was just wondering if I should go. Go where? The Phoenix. Oh, I think so. Well, it's a big adjustment to make, Steve, and be her first time alone. And, uh, 
It'll also be your first time away from her. Except for the honeymoon, and uh, she stayed with your mother. Oh, I guess that is part of the apprehension, but... Well, I'm still wondering if I should go. What do you think? I think so. You said that before. You asked the same question before. <laughs> do you want me to convince you? Please. All right. Dodie isn't used to the roughness around here, so in the morning I will talk to Charlie and the boys, and then on Saturday we go to Phoenix. Are you sure it's that simple? Sure, I'm sure. You know, you're pretty good at solving things. Thank you. You're welcome. I wonder if I really should go to Phoenix. <laughs> I'm not listening. <laughs> What does it look like I'm doing? It looks like you're using all my shaving soap. Well, do you want me to walk around with whiskers all over the place? <laughs> whiskers? I can get more hair off a half a grape than you could off your whole face. <laughs> what an artificial light. You should see this beard out in the sunshine. Well, Lois, could I talk to you for a minute? Dad, first, could you do something about Ernie and the shaving routine? Uh, what shaving routine? One where Ernie uses all my shaving stuff like it was growing on trees. Well, Ernie, I guess it is about time you got your own shaving equipment. Hey, great. It'll be my treat, huh? Look here. I'll put it over there. Thanks. Now, fellas, uh, you know Barbara and I are planning to go to Phoenix. Dad noticed the old beard even in artificial light. <laughs> Ernie, this is important. Now, it seems that uh, Dodie's having trouble getting adjusted to life around here. I was thinking we might come off a little wild to a little girl. Well, that's it, Chip. So while I'm gone, will you both keep an eye on Dodie and uh, spend some time with her and uh, hold down on the rough stuff, huh? Oh, sure, Dad. Remember, this is a whole new life for Dodie, and uh, we have to break her in gently. Better give that same speech to Uncle Charlie, Dad. He's about as gentle as a bomb. Yeah, well, I've already talked to Charlie. And I have faith that things will run smoothly around here this weekend. Well, don't worry, Dad. They will. You can go to Phoenix and freak right out, Dad. Well, that's very reassuring. <laughs> See you then, Mr. Okay. Oh, well, I'll need to raise her one more time before I get my own, you know, Chip. Okay. I wouldn't want you to get suspended for going to school with a goatee. <laughs> Real hilarious, Chip. Real hilarious. My teacher says you can't come to school anymore, Myrtle. You're still worried about Mommy going to Arizona. I think you ought to try to get that off your mind. Don't worry. We'll see you soon. Wait till I get a hold of that grocer. Sending me tough celery. Uh... What did you say, Myrtle? You're not supposed to say that about Uncle Charlie. Hi, Dodie. Hi, Dodie. If you want to throw the football, I'll go upstairs. Well, you'll have a quiet day, Dodie. I'm going to split. My friend Larry's going to pick me up in a while. Uncle Charlie's in the kitchen smashing something with a knife. <laughs> Oh, that's just his way of chopping celery. Don't worry, Dottie. And if that bothers you, you better not ever watch him pound veal. <laughs> I'll see you later. We'll see you, Ernie. Well, listen, Dottie, I've got a little time if you want to play a game or something. Does it have smashing and yelling in it? No, that's something you want to play. Hey, how about house? House? With something you hate. Oh, no, great. Oh, what do we do? Okay. I'm the mother, Myrtle's the baby, and you're the grandfather. I feed us milk, and you burper. Boy, this is a first. Huh? 
I mean, I've never been a grandfather before, and I've never burnt my own hand. Stop leaving your ashes on the floor, Grandpa. I work like a dog around here. I'm oh, sorry. Hey, Chip. Yeah, Larry in here. Uh, Dodie, my friend's here now. Well, the baby has more air in his stomach. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a sight you don't see every day. <laughs> oh, well, the baby's fine, Dodie. Now I gotta go. You're a real good house player, Chip. Oh, thanks, Dodie. And we'll see you later. You know, you ought to have some cards printed up. Chip Douglas, Dow Burper. Wise guy. <laughs> Mommy's leaving tomorrow, Merlin. You have to stop worrying. Steve, maybe I should stay home. Charlie O'Casey say, woman who changed mind too often, often wears mind out. <laughs> Young man. I just came in to tell you that you can relax about Dodie staying here with me over the weekend. Oh, thank you, Uncle Charlie. Now, uh, you two just have a good trip. Thanks, Charlie. You see, you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, he'll watch her. Like a hawk. Of course, if I stayed home, I wouldn't be taking advantage of Uncle Charlie like that. Come in. Hi. I just wanted to tell you to have a good time tomorrow, and I'll watch out for Dodie. That's just what I was going to tell you. Oh, that's wonderful, boys. Don't mention it. Well, when you grow up like we've been doing, you kind of notice stuff. <laughs> Have a good time. Have fun. Thanks, fellas. Bye. Well, with all that support, I'm foolish to worry. I am definitely going. You know, it's a funny thing. The split second you uh, decided positively to go to Phoenix, I decided I might stay home. <laughs> Steve. I'm kidding. <laughs> Come on, will you help me with this? Yeah. Come on. you to go and give Dodie some time. Hi, Uncle Charlie. All she wants to do is play house. Mm -hmm. Then play house. Is this a put on? Look, we promised the folks that we would watch Dodie while they're out of town. And you're going to help. Well, how about if I do the kitchen work and uh, you play house? Mm -hmm. Go on, move it. Move it. <laughs> You know, this kind of pressure on American youth is probably unconstitutional. No, no. Dodie, it looks like I don't have to leave for a while. Hey, Neat, I've got a new game I like. Oh, great. What is it? Dress up. Uh, dress up? Oh, well. I guess I'll stick with house. Okay. You're the father, I'm the mother, Myrtle's the baby. Well, what do we do? I put her to sleep and you kiss her goodnight. Oh, well, why don't we let her stay up for a little while? We'll be permissive parents. Father, kiss her goodnight. <coughs> mother, I can't kiss our baby goodnight. Because you'll catch the cold I just caught. See? You have a nice father. He doesn't want you to catch your cold or anything. Right, Myrtle. Have a good sleep. Well, the kids asleep. Looks like the game's over. Father, it's nighttime. You should be asleep yourself. It's nighttime? Sure. 
Oh! Oh, sorry. I didn't notice. Ring! Why, the ring? That's the alarm, Father. It's morning. Kiss the baby awake. Oh, uh, listen, Mother. I forgot to tell you, I've got a very important business meeting in Chicago. You do? Yeah. All fathers take business trips. So, uh, goodbye. Bye, Father. You don't think he's ever coming back? Me neither. I don't think my mommy's coming back from Phoenix. Barbara, while we're unpacking, may I take the opportunity to tell you how happy I am you finally decided to come to Phoenix with me? <laughs> sort of touch and go there for a while. Oh, Steve. What? I didn't pack this. You didn't? Dodie must have, so I wouldn't forget her. Oh. Well, she probably thinks Phoenix is a lot farther away than it is. See, maybe I ought to go home. Why, nobody comes to Phoenix for five minutes. I know, but maybe she's frightened. Well, honey, if she's frightened, Uncle Charlie and the boys will talk her out of it. Uncle Charlie may bluster a lot, but he has a lot more common sense than you think. I'll just bet Dodie has the weekend of her life. Guy, I never heard a story like this. No, I thought you'd like it. You know, bedtime stories are my specialty. They are? Yeah. Now, you just keep quiet and listen. After the nine mad dogs chased the rotten pirates over the cliff, <laughs> this here sea serpent swam up. Sea serpent? Yeah. Was he slimy and rotten? Sure. How else do you expect a sea serpent to be? I think I ought to go to sleep or something. Hold oh, on. Wait a minute. It's almost through. This wizard saw the sea serpent. Wizard? Yeah. Does he mean and scary like a witch? Worse. I think Myrtle and me ought to go to sleep. Now, how can you sleep if you don't know the end of the story? Yeah. Now, this wizard and the sea serpent went down to the beach. And what do you think happened? A fairy princess came along and granted them three wishes? Heck no. The sea serpent ate the wizard and a lighthouse and nine rowboats. <laughs> well, that's it, honey. <laughs> Have a nice sleep. <laughs> You better stand away from the window a little bit. Oh, I'm okay. Hey, you think the ball has enough air in it? Yeah, that's good enough for in the house. Go out for a pass. Say, didn't Dad say not to play football in the house? Don't worry, Rob. We won't hurt anything. Go ahead. Hey. Almost got you there, Dodie. around in the house. It was an ass. Oh, yeah, 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 Are you all right, honey? I'm all right, but I think Myrtle's dead. <laughs> go eat your sandwiches. Come on, honey. Here, I'll carry Myrtle. There you go. Well, we said we were sorry. Yeah. I think we better play ball outside. Next time I make a sandwich for myself, I'm going to put my initials on it. <laughs> you 
thing she got, Dad? Oh, I don't think so. See? I hate boys. Oh, honey. You shouldn't hate boys. Especially your brothers. All they do is bust stuff and yell junk and knock little girls down and hurt Myrtle. You know something, Dodie? What? Boys grow up to be daddies. And then they take care of girls. And they protect them from all sorts of things. And just like your new daddy does for you. Only how come they're so rough and everything? You know what boys say about girls? What? They say that girls are too sissy. I'm not a sissy. <laughs> to a boy you are. You'd rather wear pretty clothes when you can. And you don't like to be knocked down. And I bet you'd rather play house than football. Yeah. Well, see, that's the way things are supposed to be. Men are rough because it's sort of built in. And girls are soft because that's the way men like them. You mean it's never gonna get better around here? <laughs> Not really. But you'll get used to it. And then one day, you'll wake up and find that you wouldn't want it any other way. Man. And when you want a woman's world, you can always come to your mother or me. Did you hear that, Myrtle? We gotta get used to it. If Myrtle and me get smashed, are we allowed to bleed on the rug? <laughs> Charlie told me a bedtime story about an old, slimy, rotten sea serpent. But that's okay, because I'm a sissy. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Dory. What was she talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I imagine if we could figure it out, she was... Uh, trying to tell us that things are getting better around here. Nine minutes exaggerating. Hi, Chip. How are the babies? Oh, fine. No problems? Oh, just the usual. I changed two of them, and after that, they were happy. What happened to home by night? Did the movie run late or something? Complained to the window shopping champ. After the movie, she had to look at a few thousand shoes. Now you're exaggerating again. Well, let's go to a movie or something, she says. 
I found out what or something was. One hour and nine minutes of gawking at shoes. Well, I guess I'll get going. I'm sorry we kept you so late. I'm really sorry, Chip. I just couldn't make up my mind between the buckle square toe and the clear heel sling pump. Well, that'll do it every time. <laughs> Night. Night. Good night. Uh, young man. You forgot your scuffed toe round heel. <laughs> really, Rob, you shouldn't get up tight in front of your brother. I'm sorry I have to leave so soon. I'd like to stay to see how this thing turns out. <laughs> If I use the washer, help yourself. Uh, you and Katie still squabbling? What do you mean? Well, your laundry bag is half empty. Now, either the triplets are running dry, or you had to get out of the house. <laughs> oh, Rob, she didn't throw you out of the house, did she? What's lunch? Of course, I shouldn't have known. Mr. Blabbermouth, tell me, are Katie and I going to be on the 6 o'clock news? Oh, well, hi, Rob. I thought I heard you out here. Say, did uh, you and Katie settle your little problem? <laughs> oh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for the sandwich, Uncle Charlie. That's all right. All I was going to do was eat it. <laughs> you want to talk about it, Rob? Uh, Dad, there's, there's nothing to talk about. When Katie and I got home last night, we had a little flap. And the triplets woke up. And uh, by the time we got them to sleep, we were just too exhausted to argue anymore. Uh, everything's fine. Oh, that's good. There's one thing that bugs me, though. What's that? It's women. <laughs> They're devious. They, they like to plot things. They like to maneuver you. You uh, think Katie maneuvered you? Yes. She wanted a new pair of shoes, but did she come right out and say it? No. What did she do? She said, let's go to the movies. Now, why would she do that? Because the theater just happens to be right next door to Lawson's Bootery. Oh, what makes you think she didn't really want to see the picture? Slaughter on Bloody Ridge? <laughs> Dad, believe me, the main attraction was shoe sale at Lawson's Bootery. Oh, come on, Rob. Well, you're a, a newlywed. Wait till you've been married as long as I have. Oh, yeah, you uh, old-timers know all the answers. <laughs> no offense, Dad, but you've been living in a man's world too long. You'll find out. I know that you and Barbara love each other, and so do Katie and I. But love has nothing to do with it. It's just part of being a woman. They like to maneuver and scheme. I, I think it's genetic. Genetic nothing. It's built right into them. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, honey. Steve? Well, Dodie and I finished our shopping. We thought maybe you'd like to have lunch with us. Well, that's the best offer I've had all day. The pink parakeet? Where is that? Okay, I'll uh, change clothes and I'll meet you in 45 minutes. Bye-bye. Well, that was my wife inviting me for lunch. No scheming, no maneuvering, just a nice, thoughtful gesture. Yeah, well, you still better keep your eyes open. She's probably up to something. No, I know, Barbara. I think you're wrong, Rob. Yeah, I won't be needing this. Oh, thanks. I think you're wrong, too, Rob. What could possibly happen in a place called a pink parakeet? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm meeting Mrs. Douglas. Noticing, I, uh, I seem to be the only man in the whole place. Oh? Well, there's a man over there. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, that's the bus boy. Oh. Don't you like it here, Daddy? 
Oh, oh, it's uh, it's fine, Tony. Fine. Thank you and Mother for inviting me. I'm starved. Are you ladies ready to order? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you know what you want, Odie? No, I'm still thinking. Daddy can order. All right. Well, while you uh, other ladies are making up your minds, I know exactly what I want. I want a nice, thick, juicy steak sandwich and some French fried potatoes and a nice big salad. Do I real progressing? Um, they don't have steak sandwiches here, honey. Oh. Um, the closest we come to meat is the pimento and egg yolk. <laughs> um, here's a list of the sandwiches. Oh, fine. Well, let's see, uh, pimento and egg yolk. Chopped walnut and chives, cream cheese and parsley, and yogurt and shredded olives? <laughs> well, let's see now. Uh, uh, why don't you just uh, bring us an assorted platter and we'll have uh, two coffees and a milk. I'm sorry, honey. I should have realized you wouldn't be comfortable in a place like this, but it's Dodie's favorite. Oh, it's, it's fine, fine. It's, uh, it's only different, and uh, it's very interesting. <sighs> well, now, uh, what mischief have you two girls been up to? Daddy, I've got a problem. Oh, well, what's your problem, Dodie? Our class is having this nature thing at school on Monday, and I promised to bring a tree. Oh, well, that's no problem. We'll just go down to the nursery and buy a little tree. <laughs> no! Somebody has to be a tree. Oh, somebody has to be a tree. Jane and Tammy and me are being mushrooms. <laughs> I, I'm sure you'll be very pretty mushrooms. But a forest would look pretty dumb without a tree. <laughs> sure would. When the teacher asked who had a big brother to be a tree, I said I had three of them. Well, you certainly do have three of them, and I'm sure any one of them would be happy to be your tree. You really think so, Daddy? You really think so? Oh, sure. I'll tell you, why don't you ask Ernie? He's really started to grow, and he'd make a first-class tree. Don't you think, Mother? I think. Well, now, let's get down to the business of this meeting, eating. <laughs> Don't they look great, Daddy? <laughs> oh, they look wonderful. <laughs> Happy appetite. <laughs> Now, let's see. Uh, which is which? Um, the round ones are yogurt and shredded olive. And the square ones are uh, chopped walnut and chives. And the purple ones are pimento and... <laughs> well, now, let's see. I think I'll start with one of the uh, square ones. Um, uh, a second thought, maybe uh, one of the round ones would be more filling. <laughs> Oh, they are delicious. Boy, this tastes good, Charlie. This ain't no pink parakeet, but we aim to please. Steve? Steve, are you down there? Yeah, I'm here, honey. I'll be right down. Honey, what are you doing? Barbara knows I didn't get enough to eat. Honey, I've got a bit of a problem. I bought these shoes on approval today, and I can't decide which ones to keep. Oh. Well, they're both very nice. Uh, either one would be fine. <laughs> I just can't make up my mind. The patent leather or the square toe. Well, those are nice. These? Hmm. 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 What about the patent leather? Well, uh, they're nice, too. I was always partial to patent leather. Well, good. These are uh, much more stylish. Oh. And they're more practical, too. Uh -huh. Well, I, I suppose that's true. Uh, good. Well, the patent leather go with a lot more of my clothes. Well, uh, why don't you get the patent leathers? But I like the others, too. Well, then, uh, 
take those. Huh? Hi, kids. Hi. Hi. Hey, where are the babies? Uh, double parked? <laughs> no, Grandma dropped by to spoil them for a while, so we got out for some fresh air. Well, it's perfect timing because Steve was just trying to help me decide which one of these I should keep. Now, what do you think? Katie? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Troublemaker. Oh, they're both beautiful. Let's look at them in the light. Why don't you man talk with your father for a while? Dad, the honeymoon is over. Join the club. What are you talking about, Rod? Well, can't you see? Barbara's starting to maneuver. It's the old, uh, which pair do you like better, dear, routine. Oh, is that what it is? Well, sure. And you're supposed to say, uh, well, honey, why don't you keep them both? Rob, if she wanted both pairs of shoes, I'm sure she wouldn't maneuver or be devious. She'd just tell me. <laughs> Dad, you sure are naive for a father of three. <laughs> By the way, how was the, uh, the pink parakeet? Oh, it wasn't bad. It was kind of fun. <laughs> Barbara didn't just happen to uh, drop in a little softy about the shoes? No. No, the subject of shoes never came up. Oh, well, uh, she's smoother than I thought. Well, Katie made up my mind for me. It's oh. the patent leather. Well, wonderful. It's all settled. Hmm? That is, if you agree. Oh, I do. I do. Gee, uh, I don't know, Barbara. I think the square toe looks much more youthful. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it certainly is more mod if that's what you're looking for. Uh, I think Robbie's right. What do you think, Steve? Well, darling, if you're having so much trouble deciding, why don't you just take both pair? Oh, aren't you alive? I wouldn't think of it. I said I'd only keep one pair, and that's all I'm going to keep. It's the patent leather, and these go back. <laughs> hey, why don't you take me upstairs and show me what they go with? Mm. Well... What do you have to say to your newlywed father now? Well, uh, I think you better watch out, Dad. She must be setting you up for something big. <laughs> Who's there? Me. Come on in. Did you have a nice time at the library? Well, not bad. Something you want to ask me? Well, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun to be a tree? <laughs> huh? Yeah, for our class. With live flowers and mushrooms and everything. Oh, oh, you're going to be a tree. Oh, it sounds great. Listen, if there's anything I can do to help fix you up, I'd be glad to do it. No, I can't be a tree. I'm too little. You have to be a tree. Me? How about Ernie? He won't do it. He said trees don't wear glasses. <laughs> he said that? I'm sorry, Dodie, but I really can't either. I I'm busy that night. But I didn't say what night. Oh, I'm busy every night that week. The coach is holding extra basketball practice. Can't you do your show with just mushrooms and flowers? No, we have to have a tree. Gee, I'm sorry, Dodie. Why don't you ask Uncle Charlie? Well, oh, okay, bye. Something on your mind? Well, come on in and take a load off your brain. Ernie wouldn't, and Chip wouldn't, would you? No, probably not. Well, okay. Hey, wait a minute. Come on back here. Now, what is it? Maybe I would. Be a tree so I can be a mushroom? Sorry, I haven't got enough sap left. But you just stand there in the forest and all those mushrooms dance around you. Well, count me out. I got bad roots. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a pretty funny looking forest. Be a tree. Oh, 
What's the matter? You said they were my true, honest brothers. Chip and Ernie? Of course they are. What's wrong? I asked them to be a tree and they wouldn't. And Uncle Charlie wouldn't either. Did they say why not? They said they were busy. Well, if they said they were busy, I'm sure they are. Should I ask Daddy? No, sweetheart. That wouldn't be right. Isn't he my daddy? Well, yes, he's your daddy, but being trees is for children. And he's a grown-up, and, well, that'd embarrass him. Oh. Um. Sweetheart, even if they might not want to be a tree, that doesn't mean that they don't love you. I'm sure they do. What will I tell the teacher and the kids? Dodie, now you're a big girl now. And you know that you can't have everything you want. There's bound to be some disappointments. That's, well, that's part of growing up. You go to sleep now, sweetheart. Maybe, maybe things won't look so black in the morning. Good night. I love you. I love you. Well, if she's upset, it's important. Well, you remember that little problem she had at lunch? Oh, about the tree? Well, she asked Chip and Ernie, and they said they were busy. Oh, they are. I can't blame any grown boy for not wanting to wear a tree outfit and a pageant for little children. Well, maybe if I asked the boys. Oh, no, no, honey. It's all right. I talked to her, and she understands. She has to realize that everybody has disappointments. That's part of growing up. Yeah, I guess so. What, uh, what does the tree have to do? Well, nothing. It just stands there. It just stands there, huh? Doesn't have to talk or anything. Not that I know of. I'll be back in a minute. Mama tells me you're looking for a tree. Well, what kind of tree do you want? A poplar? A maple? Any kind. Do you think I might be a good tree? Daddy! <laughs> hey, hey, not so hard. You'll bend my trunk. <laughs> Now, for our closing presentation by the girls of A2, we bring you our friends of the forest. Brace yourself. Here it comes. <laughs>
<laughs> a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. <laughs> Tree I've ever seen. Oh, sure hey, maybe later on you can branch out. Oh, yeah, you are, honey, honey, you were wonderful. Oh, thank you. Really, be careful. You're stepping oh. on my roots. How can I ever thank you? Oh, it was really nothing. All I had to do was stand there with my nest of robins on my shoulder. Should have been in my hair, but here comes the star of the show. Daddy, Daddy, they said we were the best. Sure, oh, you're the best. <laughs> thank you for you all guys coming. Well, we thought I ought to be handy. In case Dad fainted or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, we've got to get out of your mushroom costume because Mrs. Snell wants to lock up. Okay. See you in a minute, Daddy. Come on, Katie. Yeah, see you in a minute. Yeah, and I got to go. I want to get home before Chip and Ernie get there. By the way, we can use you in our fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> well? Well, what, Ralph? Well, I, I told you she was setting you up for a big one. What do you mean? Why, she maneuvered you. Oh, do you think so? Oh, definitely. Well, maybe she did or maybe she didn't, Rob. We'll never be sure, huh? But I'll tell you something. As long as there's love involved, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> 